New life doesn't stop for war. In a hospital basement in Cherniu, just two hours from Ukraine's border with Russia, more than 40 babies have been born down here since last week, when the entire maternity ward was forced underground by shelling. In Ukraine's capital, another basement maternity ward. Of course it's terrible what is happening. We are living in real hell. Many of Ukraine's hospitals are no longer safe, and among patients struggling, new mothers. And they were all in blood because they'd had, for example, C-section. And then again, the alarm started and they need to go down. So basically they didn't even have time to lie after the C-section. As basic hospital supplies begin to run out, 36 tons of critical aid arrives in Poland. We have uh, surgical supplies uh, to treat the wound, as well as medicine for all other diseases that do not stop for work. But the aid is destined for nearby western Ukraine, far from the devastation to the east and south. As neurosurgeons, obviously, this doctor trains physicians in Ukraine for elective surgeries. They're so, now treating war trauma. Bullet holes, shrapnel wounds that involve uh, significant, you know, um, degloving of the scalp. Another dimension to the crisis, the threat of infectious diseases spreading in crowded conditions. Only a third of Ukraine's population is double vaccinated against COVID-19. The country also has one of the highest rates of tuberculosis in Europe. Many of these are medical conditions that if access is interrupted, they could very quickly lead to severe morbidity, serious complications, and in worst case, death. And as that threat looms, Ukraine's healthcare system and its people manage to carry on for now. Vicodopia, CBC News, Toronto.